actually put in my mind that I'll probably go to my grave, that it will never be solved. But after 35 years, the Ketty murder mystery is closer than ever to being solved. And tonight, we're showing you new evidence just discovered. But as CBS 13's Tony Lopez tells us, old questions still linger. What's taken so long to close the book on this horrific crime? Spring showers replenish the waterways near the Feather River, giving life to this picturesque landscape in Plumas County, about 140 miles northeast of Sacramento. But the rainfall can't wash away the horror of what happened on this now empty lot in the tiny resort town of Ketty 35 years ago. It's a case that's gathered far more dust than clues over the years. The Ketty Cabin murders from April 1981. Three people, including a single mother of five, Glenna Sue Sharp, her son John, and a family friend, Dana Wingate, were tied up, bludgeoned, and stabbed to death inside a tiny cabin in this resort-like community in Plumas County. Her 12-year-old daughter, Tina, was taken from the cabin and later killed. Current Sheriff Greg Hagwood was a teenager at the time and knew some of the victims. I knew uh, the two boys that were murdered. I worked with them the entire summer uh, before the before the murders. Yes, it was very personal. Special investigator Mike Gamberg knew them as well. Dana was at my house the day before uh, the, uh, uh, the homicide. Both now share a common goal, okay. to solve this brutal quadruple yeah, murder. Yeah. The case sat largely untouched for many, many, many years. It became a top priority when Sheriff Hagwood took over several years ago. He hired investigator Gamberg to focus on the Ketty murders. After countless hours of digging, the clues in this cold case started heating up, and new light is emerging on this decades-old crime. The more time I get on it uh, and the more information I get it, it's, uh, it's just a great relief. Relief is something Sheila Sharp has been searching for since that dark day in April of 81. She was spending the night at a friend's house when the murders took place and came home to find the bodies. I actually put in my mind that I'll probably go to my grave, that it will never be solved. And, um, and then when all this is coming out, it brought up the hope again. That hope is coming from an unlikely source. Information from a family member of one of the men suspected in the murders, Bo Bobaday who together with the other prime suspect, Marty Smart, are now deceased, has led to a discovery investigators thought was long gone. We found it. A hammer, similar to the one reported missing by Smart, one of the accused killers, was dug up near the crime scene just last month. And clearly by looking at the hammer, you can tell it's been at that location for a very, very long time. What you see here is uh, the hammer that we found, okay? We were there as Sheila was shown the hammer and this knife, which may also be connected to the crimes. And something else was found. The fascinating aspect of that discovery is that that envelope had never been opened. An envelope with a cassette recording of a man telling a sheriff's dispatcher a body found three years after the murders could be that of one of the victims, Tina, who was kidnapped from the scene. Investigators believe it was no random call. It came on the three-year anniversary of the killings. That individual either participated or had first-hand knowledge. The tape was never admitted into evidence. In fact, it was found at the bottom of a box. It's a little suspicious. It's a little troubling. The sheriff says it's not the only troubling aspect of this case. I am not by nature a conspiracy theorist, but there are facts and circumstances. The number and the nature of which uh, I can't ignore anymore. What was ignored, an alleged admission of guilt 
by one of the prime suspects. Marty actually confessed, right? Yes. But what happened to that confession? Somehow uh, it was uh, excluded. Uh, they uh, uh, covered it up, is the way it sounds. The people involved in this crime knew some influential people, apparently. That's my sense, yes. It's a belief long shared by the victim's family. I mean, I was told the suspects were told to get out of town. So to me, that means it was covered up. It's been hard to cover up the emotions stirred up by this 35-year-old mystery. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is, uh, and you have to pardon me, this is very personal. This killed this community. Keddy was done. Keddy was absolutely finished. In a way, Gamberg and Sheriff Hagwood's work has only just begun. The hope is this new evidence will lead to new arrests. We're convinced that there are a handful of people that, that fit those roles who are still alive. I have a measure of confidence that we've identified some of them and we're gonna be, we're gonna be coming. How soon could we expect some arrests in this case? It could be next month, it could be next year, um, but really the focus and our priority is getting the truth, getting the answers. And when that happens, there's going to be closure, I think. Closure after so many years. In the coming days, that hammer and the knife will be scoured for any possible DNA evidence, and that tape will be cleaned up and examined by the FBI to see if there's a possible voice match with anyone who's already been interviewed in connection with this case. The Sheriff's Department says they're looking at about a half dozen people, Sam and Christina, who were either lookouts at the time the murders were happening mm -hmm. or they helped hide the evidence. So the, the, their focus might now be on the cover-up, is what you're saying. That's going to be part of it as well. Yeah. yeah, they want to bring people into the mix who were responsible, but also uh, they don't want to close the book on the fact that some missteps allegedly mm -hmm. were, were taken at the time. These guys clearly have an emotional connection to this story. Oh, yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right, Tony, thank you.